In the Pecos wilderness, this is as far as gasoline can take you. So welcome to what the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish calls packing school. We're gonna teach some guys who don't have a whole lot of horseback experience yet. Um, some of the some of the tricks and hopefully get them interested. The first lesson is as basic as they come. Treat your animals system. well. You wanting to be able to bring you back out. So uh, that's why you go to links to make sure everything's put on them right. And uh, you buy good equipment if you, you know, if you can afford it. And you take great care, like brushing away any dirt or stickers before trying to put on a saddle. You take care as if your life might actually depend on it and school continues. I'm just getting everybody, we're gonna unload all the gear out of here and get it sorted out and then start saddling all the riding animals. And then we'll sort out and we'll teach them a little bit about packing and balance and how to pack the other animals. No red cap, no bellman, no valet service. Out here, if you want it, you're gonna have to carry it. A lot of gear in there. You think we're going for a week or maybe a month. What these packing yeah. students will learn are priorities. Here. Not everything can make the trip. So success is going to take organization and good decisions. So how are we gonna turn chaos into something that looks like we might survive? That's the question. The answer will have to wait a while. Before packing the packs, the students will saddle their rides. Another reminder that nothing gets done out here if you don't do it. The best way to learn is to do it yourself. Don't do it for them. So we'll let them all work on saddling these horses and help each other out and then we'll go back and check each one and make sure that everything's right. One by one, the horses that will carry the wardens into the wilderness get saddled up. Everything gets adjusted, tightened and readjusted as the students don't watch but do. This is hands-on training under some very experienced eyes. This will all loosen up about the first hundred yards of trail. Of course, a horse or two do get special treatment. This is a personal relationship between me and Jasper. We're old, old friends, you see. Many, many years. The saddling includes saddlebags to carry some supplies, but the multiple days this crew will spend deep in the wilderness will need much more. As you can see, the, it's not just a piece of wood. These, these are built to fit on the back of the horse. That wooden back contraption sure is called a tree and it allows side packs to hang off the horse or the mule. This trip will use both. Make sure that this is in the back. Getting the tree properly on the pack animal is only step one of the fairly complex lesson these students must learn. Remember all that gear? So basically we're going to put a whole bunch of this stuff in bags and boxes even it out and balance it on, on these horses and mules. The first concern is always weight. The whole idea of a pack saddle is something that you can put your load on and carry it, basically carry your camp up. While it would be nice to carry everything they brought, the pack animals have natural limitations. If you have a smaller animal, you know, 50 to 60 pounds on a size, pretty good. A bigger animal in a short distance, 60 to 70, but you just got to know your livestock. Everything that goes into the packs faces some tough decisions. How much does it weigh, and how badly do we need it? That goes for everything, from sleeping bags and propane to cookies for snack time. It's a balancing act of desired luxuries versus absolute necessities. The huggies are the most important thing that you have up there. Don't ask any questions. And the horses get consideration, with a supply of grain filling the base of a few packs. Eyeballing the loads helps make decisions as they pack, but the scale will have to make any final cuts. The fact is we'll have to do some weighing here. Put the chips on the top. The students get more hands-on experience and a workout, checking the workload they'll be loading on the animals. It'll weigh 63 pounds. Okay, let it down. 72 pounds. And it isn't just that the weights need to be light enough, but they need to be even. The loads need to be centered and balanced. Take a look, just kind of see if they're gonna be close to center. And when I pull the other side, they'll come around. And once the tarps are strapped snugly over the carefully crafted packs, the animals are ready to hit the trail. But the humans still have a little schooling. They don't all have experience on horseback, and none have ridden these mountain trails with pack animals. A pull and a release is the best way to do things. If you're just pulling on them, they'll figure that out and they'll bite down on that bit and then you have no control. This, like virtually everything else this packing school has covered, can be information that will make or break the trip. And on wilderness trails where just about anything could happen, 
the stakes are serious. If we tell you to let go of a lead rope or we tell you to jump off or whatever, just do it. Um, there'll be a reason. We'll try to explain everything as we go. Packing for days into the wilderness is hard work, and training newbies as you go makes the labor load even greater on these teachers. But you won't hear them complaining. I love doing it. It's a lot of work, but um, there's no place I would rather be, and nothing I'd rather teach. It's, uh, it's neat, and it's awesome to see people that are interested in it because more and more these days, there's less and less people that are interested in doing this kind of stuff. Demand within the Department of Game and Fish actually outran the strip's ability to handle it, which bodes well for the popularity and future of these pack animal ventures into New Mexico's wilderness. And these students aren't done learning. Class continues out on the trail.